there are some key identifying words in science. Quite often in science you might come across words which you've never seen before, but by breaking them up you can get a good idea what they might be about. It works quite well for other topics, but it's especially relevant in science that covers so many diverse topics and the words for these topics are often long and complicated. Key parts of this are the prefix, the part at the start of the word, or the suffix, the case ending for the word. Some words start with the prefix litho, which means it's related to rocks, like the lithosphere, which is a solid or rocky part of the earth. Then we have lepid, which is related to scales or flakes. Surprisingly, this is also related to butterflies and moths, where the order they belong to is that of Lepidoptera, which is because when you look really closely at their wings, they're covered with tiny scales. You don't have to be careful with the words. Sometimes they are very similar, and confusing them, especially in a medical context, can be lethal. For instance, there's hypo and hyper, where hypo means too little and hyper means too much. So if someone has hypoglycemia, it means that their blood glucose level is too low, and hyperglycemia means that it's too high. Similarly, there are the terms anti with an E and anti with an I, where anti means at the front, before or positive, and anti means at the back, behind or negative. So antenatal classes, those before a baby is born, and antibacterial has a negative effect on bacterial life. Another pairing are macro and micro, where macro is for the very large and micro is for the very small, where a macrophage is a large white blood cell, where the phage is actually referring to the fact that it eats bacteria, so it's literally a large eater. A microscope is then an instrument for viewing very small things, where scope means to examine or to look at. This is, of course brings us to all those suffixes at the ends of words. These also can be paired up, and again can be f confused, like phobia, which is the fear of something, and phile, which is the lover of something. So an aquaphobic is something or someone who fears water, where an aquaphile is someone who loves the water. One fairly common ending is oid. It just means that something is like something. So if you have an amoeboid or a rhomboid, which are respectively like an amoeba or like a rhombus. And you have opia, which refers to sight, so myopia is being short-sighted. Then again, if you're interested in medicine, you'll come across itis, which means an inflammation. So appendicitis is an inflammation of the appendix. One common word is graph, which means to draw or write. So a cardiograph is a recording or a drawing of the activity of the heart. And geography, where geo means the earth, so literally it's drawings or a record of the earth. Now hopefully one ending you'll all know is ology, which is a study or the branch of a knowledge. It can be used in things like biology, ecology and hundreds of others. However, it can also be used in lepidopterology, if I get that right, lepidopterology, which you can work out is the scientific study of butterflies and moths. Next time you see a long scientific term and unsure what it is referring to, try and see if you can break it down its constituent parts and the meaning may come to you.